Hello, and welcome to the Curiosity and Consciousness podcast. The intention of this podcast is to open your mind, get curious about yourself, and connect to the power you hold within. I am your host, Karen Maloney, an inside out coach, helping you to believe in yourself and manifest your desires. Check out the podcast available on all platforms and go to my website, www.karenmaloney.com, for all info. Hello, hello everybody. Welcome. Thanks for joining for another episode. And today, as always, I have another wonderful, interesting, fascinating guest and conversation for you today. And today joining me is Michael Thornhill, who's the co-founder of Casa Galactica in Peru. Michael is a traditionally trained plant spirit healer, professional channel and advocate of trauma informed care. Recovering from addiction, trauma and abuse have been a big part of Michael's own healing journey. He now dedicates his life to helping others heal themselves. Casa Galactica offers ayahuasca healing and evolution retreats, online private sessions and group programs for dedicated inner truth seekers and multidimensional healers. So again, another super fascinating conversation for you this week. And I really enjoyed connecting with Michael and hearing some of his own background and journey. And as he calls it, his quest to heal from addiction and his journey to the soul and both himself and his wife, Jamie, in their own lives and in the work that they do in Casa Galactica, they consider themselves dedicated inner truth seekers. And I think that's something really valid as well, that once we move into that space for ourselves, it does bring gold. But Michael also talks about how the healing journey at times can feel like pushing a boulder up the hill and how it's really easy for us at any stage to decide to go back to the safety and the security of what was familiar, even if it wasn't very comfortable or ultimately what we wanted and how consistency is key when we're moving through the healing journey. He mentioned different aspects that we truly need in order to heal ourselves and a strong intention and a desire to heal being one of them. He also shares about the option of ayahuasca as a catalyst or a healing tool, but also speaks about and shared different ideas for anyone who maybe didn't want to go the plant medicine route. There's still lots of options for them. He spoke a lot about trauma-informed care and trauma-informed healing and how trauma is relative to all of us, no matter what we have experienced. So again, lots in this conversation about how to heal ourselves, what's necessary for healing, how we can unravel ourselves and how we can connect to the bigger picture as well of being more than just the sum total of our experiences. So enjoy this conversation. And if you want to find out more on Michael's work or sign up to his newsletter as well, which he has some freebies to give away that he spoke about towards the end of the conversation, go to www.casagalactica, that's C-A-S-A-G-A-L-A-C-T-I-C-A dot com. But as always, I will have links as well from the show notes on my website, karenmaloney.com. So click the podcast section and into this episode. And finally, just before we delve into the conversation, just to remind you that I'm doing an online group relaxation healing session on Thursday, the 28th of July, where I'll guide you through a short visualization and then share with you different acupressure points to hold in your body to help free yourself of excess stress, anxiety, fear, worry, doubt, whatever you may be holding on to. So go to my website as well, karenmaloney.com and click the shop section and you will see it there. Thursday, 28th of July. Other than that, enjoy this conversation. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining and tuning in for another episode. And Michael Thornhill, you're very welcome. And thanks for joining me today, first of all. Hi, Karen. Thank you so much. Absolute (laughs) pleasure to be here. Thanks so much. 
Yeah, and it's funny as we we're just chit chatting there before we started recording. You're from Northern Wales, based in Peru, and here I am, the west of Ireland, based in Mexico, and here we are connecting. And I've no doubt we're going to have a wonderful conversation today as well. So um, I love that as well, and the power of the internet as well. Some of the the benefits of it as well. But Michael, you're going to share with us today as well about some of your incredible work that you're doing and the place you have in Peru called Casa Galactica. But maybe if you just share some of your background with us first and kind of what brought you to this work. Absolutely. Well, thanks for having me. And yeah, it's it's nice to hear an Irish accent. It feels like a little bit of home is yeah. kind of joining here. So often being living overseas for so long and not encountering people from, from that area of the world, I always enjoy connecting with people from from near home. Mm-hmm. So absolute yeah. pleasure to be here. So yeah, I'm, I'm originally from North Wales. Uh, I left Wales though when I was 16 and I was honestly, I was, I was excited to leave. I was, mm-hmm. I was from a small town and my parents were divorced. My mother was ill. I was living with my grandparents and there were a lot of gangs and other people and things going on that was just, you know, it was part of growing up in North Wales that I'm lucky mm-hmm. to have got out of that alive and um very grateful for that i got a little scholarship to go to a boarding school so i was from a poorer background and i got a scholarship to go to a play rugby in a mm. in a private school and that was kind of my ticket out of wales and mm. from there I, n- I never really went back i never went back to live at home again i went to manchester university to study chemistry in between that i was in ibiza uh, partying djing and heavily addicted to to many different substances. Mm -hmm. And this is part of the reason why I'm here now in Peru is because of my quest that I went upon to heal from addiction. And I wouldn't even describe it at that time as healing from addiction, just wanting to stop doing mainly cocaine, mainly Mm -hmm. uh, hard drugs. And I found ayahuasca, and that took me on a, a journey I would say to the soul and across the world through to India and Nepal, studying different healing modalities, yoga and Reiki, and then subsequently ending up in Peru in the Amazon rainforest initially, where I studied and apprenticed in the Shipibo tradition, learning more about the ayahuasca tradition. And after living and working there for quite a while, then I met my beautiful wife, Jamie, who came to the jungle when I thought there was no hope of me ever meeting anyone in the middle of the Amazon rainforest. My beautiful wife, Jamie, landed from Oklahoma and mm-hmm. we met and then we fell in love pretty much instantaneously. And then our mm-hmm. then the roller coaster really started. Then we <laughs> went on the reflecting back to each other, each other's trauma, mm-hmm. uh, just coming into our awareness, learning how to communicate, how to love properly and unconditionally and openly. And what a journey we've been on together. And we were training and working together, facilitating ayahuasca retreats. And after a period of time, we decided to to go out on our own and start Casa Galactica, a multidimensional center for healing and evolution, which ayahuasca is just one part of that. Uh, Mm -hmm. Both myself and Jamie are intuitive mediums and channels, which basically mean that we connect with your higher self, with your spirit team, with your guides, and are able to bring through guidance, uh, messages, transmissions, energetic healing to help people heal and evolve. We do that in a variety of different ways through intuitive readings, channeling sessions, trauma healing sessions, and then a whole bunch of courses that help people step into their truth in Mm -hmm. service to all and and create soul aligned businesses as well. So we have a plethora of work that we do, a lot of it online, and then we do work with people in person now here where we're actually based, where we were talking just before the show, Karen, in the Cusco region in a small Mm -hmm. town called Pisac in the Andean Mountains. So I'm sure you know how beautiful it is and majestic it is here in this land. And this is where we've decided to call our home, being in Peru, Mm -hmm. where ayahuasca is 100% legal and we can do all of our work here in service to others and absolutely enjoy this beautiful, beautiful scenery. And yeah, it's it's an absolute pleasure to be here. It's been a a long road and Mm -hmm. uh, I'm I'm thankful to have Jamie by my side and I'm very grateful that we're able to help and share what we've learned along the way with others in, in our own little way. 
Amazing. I love that. And yes, such a beautiful part of the world as well. I, I was telling you how I'd spent six weeks in Cusco. I was volunteering in a hostel. It was very different to like an inner evolution retreat, but still it was amazing. And I loved what you shared there as well. And, you know, you're kind of touching on a little bit your journey to the soul, as you mentioned, and that quest to heal from your addictions and that. And what for you between your own personal journey and the roller coaster you've been on with Jamie and the work that you do, what's truly required from your experience for true healing and transformation to happen? Yeah, absolutely beautiful question. So we we describe the work that we do for people as for dedicated inner truth seekers. And myself and Jamie, both co-founders of Casa Galactica, we would describe ourselves as dedicated inner truth seekers. And that's really what we feel like it takes for people mm -hmm. to take that transformation in this lifetime to the next level and to activate the soul blueprint and share that passion with the earth. So really dedicated inner truth seekers means the following things or some of the following things, being willing to look at oneself being able to ask for help, recognizing that one doesn't have all the answers, surrounding people, uh, surrounding yourself around professionals and people who have perhaps done some of the work, who have done trauma-informed care, understand what trauma-informed care and how important it is for people's evolution. Mm -hmm. But really it's that dedication, that dedication, or another word might be uh, a really strong intention that you wish to heal and evolve or whatever that intention might be for you because sometimes it can be a little bit like pushing a boulder up a hill and it takes a lot of energy to kind of get that boulder moving. And there's so many points along the way. And as I kind of briefly described on my journey of, uh, you know, I, I didn't really say this, but I had my own company. I was successful in the recruitment industry. And within that place, I then left all of that to go and travel the world, left all of my belongings, left all of, all of the kind of money that I'd, that I'd built up and kind of put this into a house in the jungle which never worked out it's just, just this the whole life just disappeared and there's so many points along that way where one can turn back one can say okay you've had enough now let's just go back to the safety and the security of of the monthly the monthly pay the the security that's promised so there's just so many different points along that path when you begin to look at yourself when it gets uncomfortable when it gets tough similar to like if you're going to a gym you know, if you just go one day and you're like, okay, it hurts. It's, you know, you can just not go to the gym and you can just go and eat a kebab or you can just do whatever you want. So it's that point of that dedication of being on that path that really creates transformation, that consistency and that desire to heal and evolve. Yeah, totally. And, you know, I love when people reiterate that again, because I think somehow in society, we've kind of all been taught this kind of learned helplessness. And, you know, someone has the magic bullet for us and this, I need this one hit wonder. And that's exactly what it's meant to be my healing journey. And, you know, that's been my experience as well. It's, you know, that boulder up the hill, it's consistent, it's, you know, uncomfortable and seems like never ending at times, but it's just that consistent and that dedication that sees us through and makes the lasting change. So I love that you just kind of touched on that again. And, you know, you mentioned there as well, trauma-informed care. So maybe if you can just touch on what trauma means to you as well, and what is trauma-informed healing as well and trauma-informed care? Yeah. So my own story of, of healing, as I mentioned, began with looking into addictions and that, and that was when I that's when I found plant medicine that's when I found ayahuasca and that was a big catalytic change for me and throughout that aforementioned journey across the world and into the the Peruvian Amazon and, and living here over the last five and a half years or so there's been a journey to the soul and seeing that darkness the trauma the sadness the pain the grief for me my mother was ill all of her life and she passed away uh, about five or six years ago. And that was a trauma that I'd carried my whole life of her being ill and being in hospital and going through many different situations, probably about 10 or 15 times where I thought she was going to die and she didn't die. So going through that grieving process of accepting death and her coming back and then still needing care over the course of pretty much my whole life. And then I thought that that was the main trauma that was in my life. Yet 
at the same time, through working with plant medicines, I've also then discovered and uncovered uh, deep layers of sexual ritual, of violent sexual abuse and trauma that is at the core of the addictions that I was not aware of. Hence, I was then blocking out all of these feelings, this PTSD with substances, with part DJing, with music and partying for days on end. And then it was only when, as we come back to becoming a dedicated and a truth seeker, when that shift in my consciousness occurred, it, all this awareness didn't come to me in the first ayahuasca ceremony. This awareness didn't come to me in the first weekend. This awareness has continued to deepen over the last five and a half years of seeing where the roots of that are, seeing where then how to heal that trauma. And for me, the cultivation of the trust and faith in the process of looking at oneself and the benefits of that of being able to be more compassionate, more unconditionally loving, more open, more caring more trustful of others through that inner truth seeking enables me to also then be of service to other people and show up and really I feel like activate and and share my soul blueprint what is here what I'm here to do in this lifetime so at any point you can turn back from that but throughout that process has just been very important for me to get the right help to work with trauma informed healers uh, work with plant medicines, work with my wife, Jamie, a lot because she's an incredible intuitive medium and my own connection to spirit, my own higher self, to be able to learn how to heal through these processes and be able to help others. So just segueing into what is trauma-informed care, trauma-informed care is creating a safe environment to, for people to heal from trauma, whether they're aware that they have trauma or whether they are unaware of what they have trauma. The same approach applies that we treat everyone equally, that there may have been events that have happened in someone's life that could be re-triggered and re-traumatization could be occurred if one doesn't approach that healing in a safe trauma-informed way. So really it in involves things like having consent in the healing process, being transparent, creating a deep level of safety and integrity, talking through people through the process, deep levels of preparation and integration, and being very empowering within the process and never forcing anything on anyone. So going through this whole level of what we would call trauma-informed care through our online work and also through our 10-day ayahuasca healing and evolution retreats in Peru, we're able to create the optimum environment, at least what we can to the best of our ability. And I do really believe and have complete faith in our standards and of work mm -hmm. care that we provide. We're able to create that environment where if there is some unacknowledged trauma, if there is PTSD, if there are some events that have happened to someone, because remembering there's nothing wrong with anyone, there's just things that have happened that have caused situations, experiences, beliefs, processes to be experienced when we're able yeah. to create that safe environment it allows for that trauma to come up in a way that allows it to be loved healed and transformed and that's really at the heart of all we do through all of our work both online and person at casa galactica love it and yeah so important and you know i i believe anyway even from my own journey my own work my own studies my own learnings as well i'm like we're kind of a nation of traumatized people, all of us, doesn't mean we have to have, even as Gabby Bernstein calls it, trauma with a capital T and trauma with a small T. Like we all have elements about ourselves that we're oblivious to at times that we don't realize are having such an impact in our lives. And how do you maybe help people as well who, well, maybe two questions. When do you suggest ayahuasca or plant medicines for people as a tool to help them to heal and if someone is really adverse to doing plant medicines as well what are other options as well for them to heal and transform that's a great question so firstly just falling back into the trauma informed care practices that we that we share here through all of our work if someone's feeling the call or feeling interested in working with ayahuasca, then the first thing that we do is to create informed consent is tell people more about what the effects of ayahuasca are, how, what potential risks are, what the benefits are, if there's any contraindications medically or, or psychologically. So we have so much information on our website and we offer, also offer people 30 minute free consultations to talk about unique circumstances. But the first thing to do is for people who are interested 
is to really do the research and we have plenty of that available to see if that's a fit for you and if it's also safe for you to participate in because for instance someone who potentially has tachycardia or some medications that they're taking that they can't come off for it would be contraindicated and dangerous for someone to participate in an ayahuasca ceremony so the first and foremost is is first do no harm so we'll make sure that the people who are coming to us will participate in a a health and wellness screening questionnaire and then after that we'll also have a one-on-one preparation session with us where we'll talk in depth about the the process and answer any questions before being accepted onto the retreat so that being said if people are interested in working with us we're open for for all people from all walks of life to be able to come and do the work with us as long as it's safe to do so so that's really what it is for us if it's safe to do so Now, the way that we talk about our work also, because as I mentioned earlier, ayahuasca is just one part of the work that we do. We're very much about empowering people with the tools for transformation that they can take home in their own life to then continue to work without plant medicine to integrate those experiences and heal deeper levels of trauma and step into the infinite truth of who they are as the infinite one creator and allowing that one consciousness to to begin to disseminate itself throughout all aspects of one's life to create more joy happiness uh loving awareness in 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 one's field of awareness so the first thing that we say is is safety now ayahuasca and plant medicines that we work with in the set and setting that we provide a trauma-informed container which is very much about empowerment it's about helping you recognize the power and the truth of your own consciousness rather than giving away your power to the external of a plant medicine the plant medicines are here as tools just like a mirror in your bathroom for you to see yourself more clearly but it's Mm -hmm. actually you that has that power so that's very powerful and transformative so when people go home they're not necessarily reliant on the plant medicines to be able to have those experiences the plant medicines are catalysts for transformation which can accelerate growth processes 5 10 or even 15 plus years that might take through traditional or psychotherapy or meditation or yoga techniques or whatever that alternative healing modalities may be that being said even if you are a fit in terms of safety profile to come and work with us for ayahuasca you just may not be interested in it or just think i don't feel like doing that why why mm-hmm. on earth would i do that that's also completely fine everyone has their own path but really what the important thing that i kind of alluded to a little earlier is where can you begin to get help? Mm -hmm. Because you don't have to do it on your own. So whether this be a 12-step meeting, a support group, an ably conversation, an online course, watching YouTube videos, working with a, a trauma healer, or whatever it may be, starting to create a foundational platform for healing, because ultimately, we're better when we're together. That is my understanding. I would not have been able to get to where I am today if I'd had to do it all on my own. Now, the nature of trauma and being abandoned, being left alone, perhaps of being neglected or abused as a child can often lead us to the perpetuation of the belief that I am alone. Thus and therefore, to survive, we create a deep level of self-sufficiency within our being which has been perfect for us to be able to survive those times but it can then become negative for us as we wish to connect with others in open relationships and 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 truthful heart-centered conversation because those walls and those protections and those barriers of self-sufficiency that we needed to have and we couldn't rely on anyone keep us isolated and alone so this transition that we're going through on earth now moving from third to fourth density in other words coming into more heart-based heart-centered living requires us to let go audaciously of those limiting beliefs that we think that we have to do this on our own because as a community as a collective we're transforming and together we're able to help each other pick each other up This is part of the work that we do here, and this is what we're so passionate about doing is helping people get the help they need, whether it be through us directly or through sharing on podcasts like this, and really just recognizing and, and helping people to see the strength and the beauty and the true power that's within each and every one of our consciousnesses, and there's so much transforming and changing on earth. I truly believe in the next five years, we're not going to recognize the way that the earth looks. And it's a really exciting time to be alive. 
It is. I agree. It is a really exciting time. And, you know, we have we have the onus or we owe it to ourselves and to everyone else to go within and to heal ourselves and to look at what's suppressed and hidden. Because, again, we do all have these things. And, you know, sometimes I always say if, if there's any aspect of your life where you're feeling blocked or things aren't working out, you know, it's a, it's a sign like our life is always reflecting to us something within us. And if we can have that more open minded, curious way of looking at what's been reflected at us like you know everything's like a mirror you know we can we can empower ourselves so much like you mentioned earlier that idea of empowerment we can begin to be curious and heal ourselves and i i love what you say about the power of community as well and it's been so important for me but even recently i recorded a podcast episode a solo episode and i'm like it is so true and yes ask for help yes you know we all need support but i'm like still at the end of the day healing as a solo process and that doesn't mean we have to do it in isolation and all in our own because that was me totally cut off thinking I had to do it on my own thinking nobody would understand and actually when we open ourselves up we see there's more similarities in all of our journeys than there are differences no matter what a person has experienced but it's still this idea of I need to do it for me because it's only me within my body that can feel and bring into awareness what's been hidden. Nobody can jump into me and do that for me. They can guide, they can lead, they can hold space, they can have the safety, they can lead the way and that's vital. But it's still, we have to, you know, like you alluded to at the beginning as well, have that desire, have that intention to be like, no, I'm going to keep going. I'm not going to go back this time. And that's like so in important as well in in my eyes to realize that it's normal that we all feel that and kind of maybe seems easier to want to go back but it's so worth keeping going and moving through the the limitations and the fears and the resistances because what lies on the other side is just magic and so so worth it and like that i believe where we're going as well as a collective in the next couple of years it's it's so vital as well that we do that and it even comes to again ourselves and our own individual stories and how we judge and perceive others because i know a lot of times we would look at you know the likes of addictions or people who are in you know quote unquote bad spirals or doing horrible things you know it's very easy for us to judge them. But I even love how Dr. Gabor Mate talks about, you know, don't ask why the addiction or the behavior, ask why the pain. Because like you said as well, you were doing the party and everything to to numb out and to support you in one way. So what has been your experience as well through your own journey and through working with people? What has been at the root of addictions? Yeah, it's 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 really it's really um, a great question. I just also just want to just reflect back. That was a beautiful, beautiful uh, response before earlier. I just really thought there's a lot of truth and wisdom in that for all the the listeners. So thank you so much for sharing that. And just also to reflect further back to what you were saying about the big T and the little T. I don't really think it matters if it's a big T or a little T mm. from the outside, at, underneath the addictions. What might seem like a little T to someone looking from the outside in might be a ginormous T for trauma for, for someone. And you can often experience this and see this where sometimes people say, I had a kind of a normal childhood and, you know, things were just kind of, okay. I, you know, we had plenty of money. We did all these things. There was nothing bad that went on. I wasn't abused, but then some just don't have that relationship with their parents. And you can see this and experience this with someone who, who, you know, from the outside, kind of view it might not look like a a big t but someone who's then not able to connect with their father or because they're working all the time doesn't have that role model around and then is always trying to impress to then be able Mm -hmm. to find that love ultimately for me at the heart of the addictions in my first ayahuasca ceremony i've talked about this many times was the recognition that i wasn't aware of what unconditional love was Mm -hmm. i went back to being born again and lying on my mother's chest after just being born and feeling the unconditional love for my family and then realizing that that all the synthetic ways that I was trying to achieve that through through drugs and especially with with ecstasy and MDMA uh, partying going to nightclubs and feeling that heart open that oneness which Mm. really in my understanding now is a 
is a one way of us trying to access that state of unconditional love, which is our true nature, but we're blocked from because of the veil of illusion and separation. Yeah. Now, just to take that back even further, I believe that the original the original trauma is being born on Earth and is actually believing that we're sec- separate from from creation. So having this incarnational experience, believing that we're separate, believing that we're not supported, believing that we have to struggle, and in many times we do struggle, that separation, feeling that we have a finite life, that we have this one life, and that we have to do all these things to be loved, I mean, wow, that's, that's, that's a real big burden that we all carry. So I think in many different ways that can then begin to manifest itself as, as addiction. And then, of course, that there are many other kind of what would maybe seen as more big T's that people would perhaps acknowledge as big T's of people being homeless, people being abused, people being in war or experiencing genocide, loss of a loved one, many of these different types of things. But ultimately, what it feels like to me is that there is a wound that needs healing, that the healing, the processing of that is not available in a direct connection with the infinite creation, with a true healing. So the self-medication occurs when we're not able to get the actual healing that will heal the wound. So we go and look out for band-aids in different ways to cover up that wound and find a sense of 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 solace within within ourselves to be able to keep on keeping on in that sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so true. Yeah, I I agree with a lot of what you said there. And, you know, even that idea that, you know, lots of teachers would even talk about it as well. Like this is this is our school. We are born here and we forget the truth of who we are and we fall into this density of just this physical body in this world. And part of that healing is the opening up again to that reconnection of, you know, the truth of we're a spirit having a human experience as opposed to a human having a spiritual experience. And I believe anyway as well, like everything is a medicine, no matter what someone turns to, because trauma is relative to everyone like that, whether it's a big T or a small T, it is tra- it is relative to that person. And I think that sometimes, I know for me sometimes as well, when I think back, I had a lot of shame to be like, well, I don't, I don't really know what's wrong with me or like I don't have any major thing to talk about. So surely there's nothing wrong with me or I can't ask for help because I'm kind of embarrassed because, you know, there's nothing, but there are things. But in my mind, comparing them to others, it's like, yeah, but grow up kind of there's there's nothing wrong with you. But again, it's all it's all relative and we can keep using band-aids for such a long time. And I mean the world is perfectly set up, whether it's, you know, addictions or drugs, but it's also exercise, it's work, it's food, it's numbing out in front of the TV. Like we're we're distracting ourselves constantly until we choose not to or maybe have had enough or want to find another way. But as well something that was truly revelationary and huge in my journey as well was reconnecting to my body because I think this happens a lot of people as well that we disconnect we we kind of jump outside of ourselves and I know I lived from my head up and trying to control everything mentally and I thought if I can think everything through and control everything I'm safe I'm fine and that reconnection to my body seemed really scary for me so what is the the intelligence and the wisdom that the body holds and how crucial it is in helping us in freeing ourselves and healing ourselves as well? Yes, uh, it's a great question. So the online trauma healing work, which I work with people, really does focus a lot on the intelligence and wisdom of the body. In other words, the body's a bit like a, a black box recorder from a flight path that records and stores all of the information within our being that we've experienced in this lifetime. And I go as far as to say also multidimensionally and across lifetimes that the body is a, uh, the trauma within the body is a karmic map of how we can heal ourselves and find liberation from all of these different incarnations and experiences and make that transition from third to fourth density. So firstly, to anyone out there who's experiencing trauma and just is going, this is so overwhelming I can't believe I'm experiencing this. I don't know how to overcome this. You can just recognize that there's way more than meets the eye that's going on. 
There's more lifetimes than just this one lifetime. This is not to scare anyone. This is is meant to be in an empowering way to recognize that there's more going on that meets the eye. Mm-hmm. So even if perhaps you're not even experiencing something at the level of what we've just said, recognizing that everything's relative, and what you were just saying there, Karen, of, of just like, well, I don't really feel like there's that much going on with me in this situation, but I can't understand why I'm feeling like this. Mm-hmm. Or for people who are having what we just say, you know, describe as the relative big T and mm-hmm. then recognize it, why is all this kind of happened to me? Why this is, this is so difficult. So whatever is arising here, recognize that multidimensionally many, many things are working through us. Now to ground that back down, how that is through that karmic map of the body, by feeling the trauma that's stored in the being, in the cells, in the DNA, in other words, very much like somatic experiencing from from Peter Levine, just dropping into the body of finding and feeling the tension, allowing that to unravel, that can create great freedom. Because if you imagine the lens of a projector screen, and if there was dirt on the screen, then that would be projected into the picture. In other words, the picture of our life manifested into the experience of our lives. So going back into the body to feel the root cause of that trauma, whether it be in a trauma healing session, a somatic experiencing session, or plant medicine work, or whatever it is, but something, anything that connects to the body, by allowing that to be freed and be released, effectively we clean that little lens on the projector screen so that we no longer need to see life through the trauma lens and thus and therefore our experience our physical reality can begin to change so it's very very powerful to go back deep into the body so there's many different ways many different modalities that that do that important in our experience to do that in a trauma-informed way because when you start dropping into some of these deeper repressed memories that are not recorded by the conscious mind yet are present within the black box recorder it enables that to be freed so that we no longer need to re-experience that and in that wake of that freedom that space then we can begin to access more of the joy love and compassion not that we need to find or create which is our very nature which is the pure light going through the lens which is now no longer dirtied in that sense so we're able to connect to the truth of who we are infinitely loving unconditional in every nature love that um and then just a question that popped into my head as well as you're sharing that when is it necessary to go back and when is enough enough because I know some people who just keep going back and back and back and be like, no, I can't move forward until I do this and I do this and I do this. When is enough enough as well and kind of have done enough ex- excavating and actually begin, like you say, creating again, as opposed to continually clearing, clearing, clearing and go back and looking for more? When is When is that line? And then move into creating actually what you do want again. Yeah, I, I think it's, it's an interesting juxtaposition of where we find ourselves of we find ourselves completely not acknowledging our trauma and then living our life out unconsciously then we find Mm -hmm. the tool of wow i can go in and make myself really uncomfortable and on the other side of it i feel better and feel free and then it's like i'm really good at this and then at the point like what happens if i don't need to do this thing that i've got really good at anymore who am i there where's my identity value and value come from now so it's a really great question mm-hmm. and it's knowing when to let go of experiences and ultimately we may find ourselves on some level keep going back because we're not able to accept a new frequency and vibration we're not actually able to accept that we may actually be able to be happy joyful and peaceful thus and therefore we keep finding ourselves going back and going back and going back now in some cases, it's the may, you may need to keep going back. You may need to keep finding and excavating because there's still more to find there. But it's really, I think it just comes down to an intuitive awareness. And this is also what, what's, what's good with working with people who are skilled in this department, that someone is able to guide you through that process to help you see when perhaps you might be going around in the same loop mm-hmm. and on a track. Now, the work that we do at Casa Galactica is very much... we describe our work as healing and evolution so healing might be described as going back really doing that excavating doing that excavating work and doing that excavating work 
Now, the evolution side is the recognition that we're multidimensional beings connected as an infinite consciousness, that we have different guides and that we have many, many different lifetimes. And this one infinite loving creation is our very nature. So at some point, and how our work differs, I would say, from traditional trauma healing work is that when people start excavating, we do that from the presence of the one infinite consciousness that enables people to be lifted up out of the mud of that experience. Because if we're just going into the body over and over and over again, just feeling that negative energy, feeling that stagnant energy, it can be quite tiring. Mm -hmm. And there's also this kind of lost feeling of why am I here? I'm just going to have to keep healing trauma the whole time. Yeah. So when we can start begin to connect to that infinite magic and wonder, which is again what we mentioned is already there, is already breezing, shining through that lens, through the space of cleaning the shadow out, we're able to anchor in and embody the truth of who we are, which is a multidimensional experience. And that's when it gets exciting. That's when people mm-hmm. can start connecting to telepathy, connect to multidimensional beings, can start doing different healing work with other people, become more of what we would call a master of manifestation, not become a victim of circumstances. Yeah. So it's very important, I feel like, that people are able to find a spiritual practice that also helps cultivate that self-recognition of the infinite consciousness that can help burn through those levels and layers. Because if we keep identifying with ourselves as the body, if we keep mm-hmm. identifying ourselves with the human experience, if we keep identifying ourselves with the trauma, then we'll never free ourselves. Here's the caveat is when you would start going into those deeper levels of non-dual states of experience, the recognition is that we're already free, that we're mm. already here. We don't actually need anything from anything. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. And, you know, but I love what you said there. And that's that's a real truth as well for people. And it's, you know, programming in our brain. What's familiar to us is what our brain likes to hold on to, even if it's not what we want. And it there is that truth of, people fearing change would be like, but I don't know who I am when I'm happy or feeling loving or peaceful or without all my trauma. And I do believe as well, like, yes, clearing is necessary at times and lots of times because we all have things. But again, like you mentioned, it does become very intuitive because, you know, we wake up to this idea as well of we are the operant power in our reality. And what I choose to focus on is what I see and what I experience. So as long as I keep going back and want to look for more and look for more, I will keep finding. So it's kind of like you say as well, that for me anyway, that connection to a higher truth, remembering the truth of our power, this multidimensional being that it's like, oh, hang on, I am the opera in power and I can step into my creative power and decide as well, like, okay, I've done enough of this for now. Yes, there's layers, they might come up again, but enough, I'm moving into this new person, this new way of being, this new way of thinking. And that's where I'm putting my focus now. So that is something that I can experience. And, you know, that's a transition we all have to make as well. And it does become very intuitive and more self-guided and easier to understand once we build the practice again because again everything comes down to a practice but yes I love that and connecting to the infinite magic and wonder again like how amazing and time is just flying by and I could keep talking but maybe as well just to even finish on if you have any information that you'd like to share that's coming up for you but also maybe is there any practical tips that people can really start putting into their lives in starting this whole self-awareness self-observation practice yeah um thank you thank you very much for everyone for listening and thanks for for having me I think I'll just segue into some more information that we have for people that will take much longer than the time that we have here Mm -hmm. today. So it's been an absolute beautiful conversation. So grateful to be here. But if you want to continue the conversation with us directly, just invite people to go to our website, which is casagalactica.com, which I believe will be in the show notes. Mm -hmm. If you go to our newsletter on on the homepage, you can sign up to our newsletter And what you'll get is you'll get into your inbox, you'll get a five-hour online workshop that I did live, including a multidimensional healing ceremony. And this is titled The Fundamentals of Healing Trauma. So there's just a step-by-step guide for five hours. You don't have to watch it all at once, but you can take notes. You can do whatever you need to. And that's going to be a really, really kind of furthered education. That's completely free. So that's what I would describe on the healing end of the spectrum. And as we've been kind of just talking about the magic and wonder of the universe as well, 
Although, of course, it's all contained within healing and evolution. Evolution is contained within healing and healing is contained within evolution. My my beautiful wife and incredible intuitive medium, Jamie, has a, a beginner's handbook to strengthening your intuition, which is also then received in your inbox as well. So then you can just start practicing different ways in your life when you can start connecting to that higher consciousness, the truth of who you are, and beginning that to kind of infiltrate every aspect of, of, of what you do mm-hmm. in a positive way. And then finally, we also give you 20% off any of your first sessions with us online as well. So yeah, please go and please go and check that out. And then on a practical level, just like where you are right now is just reach out. And it feels like this. It just, where can you start receiving more support in your life just by beginning to ask, but just to start noting where there is support in your life. And they begin to gravitate towards those areas, whether it be particular friendships or environments or support groups or hobbies or things that make you feel joyful. Begin to start following that joy, that fun, that passion, and recognize that that joy, that that happiness, that freedom that you're feeling when you're doing engaging with these types of people is the infinite creator expressing itself through you. So this whole spiritual journey doesn't have to be so serious. You can actually just start following the things that are fun for you. Of course, being aware in any areas where you might be bypassing or being completely distracted, but that's not the point of what I'm sharing. The point is start following the things that you love because that is you expressing yourself and enjoying your human life. I love it. And that's what it's all about as well. We are here to enjoy this experience and it's our birthright as well and we don't have to stay in the doom or gloom but again it's it's living with intentionality and connecting back to that power of choice and not feeling like such a victim um incredible conversation michael i absolutely loved it and yes i will have all links as well on the show notes to your website to those uh the sign up for your newsletter so people can access those freebies that you have thank you so much for that and they'll all be available as always on the show notes as well on my website so i wish you all of the best and lots of love from mexico to peru Karen, thank you so much. Thanks to all the listeners. It's been an absolute pleasure to be here. Just send in unconditional love to you all. Absolutely beautiful conversation. Thank you so much.